okay, we're going to call this a mini separate experiment because I just cannot bear to let all that loquat uh, tannin bath go to waste. It is so strong and so cool. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take some fabric that was mordanted in alum only because I have a bunch of it. And even though my dowels aren't here from Amazon, I'm going to find a can to wrap around. Uh, it might have to just like empty a can of random beans and save them. Anyway, I'm going to pre-mordant or pre-soak the fabric in an iron solution. Then we're going to roll it as though we're doing an eco print uh, like before, but it's like the reverse process. We're going to dunk it into a bath that is tannin rich rather than vice versa, dunking a tannin rich thing into an iron bath or putting an iron blanket over it. So this is just, we're going to call this a mini experiment and go with it because I just, I can't let the loquat dye go. I just can't. It's too pretty. One of the more important things as we're prepping for this iron uh, dipped eco print idea is to move it around a lot because the iron is just in a very small particulate form. Uh, so you're, you're trying to embed it in the fabric and it can um, go in unevenly. So you're going to want to make sure that you're squishing it around quite a bit. Um, I'm only probably going to let it soak for an hour just to see what happens because I know that being in the iron bath is not great for the fiber. So also I want to be done with this and go sit down. So we will try that and I will let you know when we're rolling up some plants. Okay, so for our first eco print that's a little bit of an aside here, we have soaked our alum mordanted fabric in iron. You can smell it. It's definitely in the fiber and it's already kind of saddening it a little bit. I have plant fibers over here. I have a recycled plastic barrier under here, which I already dipped in the dye vat and made sure it wouldn't uh, instantly melt or turn into something scary, and it didn't. So the plastic will live through the uh, below simmering. So I'm going to roll these in. I'm going to roll it up very tightly so that the plastic barrier protects it from the next level. Um, I don't have anything to hold my camera right now, so it's just going to have to be good enough until we do another one. And then I will use uh, some white twine to wrap around the entire bundle very, very, very tightly to try and get it to print some of these plants. And we'll see what we get. This could go terribly wrong, but I just, I like cannot waste this loquat dye. It's too pretty and it makes me upset to get rid of it. I can't get rid of it. Here's pre-roll, <laughs> pre-roll number one, which is boxwood. Not advised to make other pre-rolls with that, but uh, I'm gonna roll this up and see what happens. There's some extra plastic at the end of the row so that if you want to, you can wrap that around it too, but I think I'll just trim it. I don't know that I want extra exposure to the dye. It's very strong. I just, I can't, y'all. We rolled ourselves a lovely sage bundle. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna do two more and then we'll put them in the dye. Okay, here's fruit roll up number three. Uh, these are forest pansy red buds. Uh, what I'm thinking is, is because this dye is so flippin' strong, Normally what you would do is you would steam these after exposing them to a blanket. You could also dye them, but the dye is so strong. I'm wondering if I should dye them for like the first 15 to 20 minutes to get the interaction between the tannin and the iron. And then I should steam them for the next while. I'll see how dark the fabric is looking, but that is my current mental process on it. Okay, we did it. Here's our three test bundles. Ooh, that one doesn't feel tight enough. I might add some more wrapping to this one. Don't want a loose roll. Anyway, um, I'm going to drop those in the dye and we will see what in the hizzle happens. Well, they're in there, the little fruit roll-ups. Um, and they, not a ton of water is getting in there. Apparently I wrapped them very tightly. So I'm going to start it at 35 minutes and see what they look like when we come back. It's about 170 degrees in the dye bath. So not enough to melt the plastic but hopefully enough to dye it. It's been enough to dye literally everything I've put in here, so this stuff is intense. Okay, thrilling update. It looked like there was nothing going into these, but check it out. The end of that is definitely turning orange, and I think that there's probably dye through the middle if I look at it. I'm going to leave them in there because I don't see a real good reason not to, I guess. I would think it would take longer than 35 minutes just for the plant fibers to 
see now none of that has gotten any color down in there yet. This one I may have wrapped too tight. Well, I guess we will find out. But we will leave it. I can see that this is the red bud one because look at all the color. I can see the red buds in there. Eee! And this is my control, which is just a piece that I saddened in the iron first. And you can see that it made it a much sadder orange. So we know that that's working. And this one, it looks like fiber is definitely getting wet in there. This is the eucalyptus. But I don't think there's much color in there. So I'm going to leave those keep going. This one might be good. I'm not sure. It's, it's doing stuff. We're just going to leave them. And uh, I'll come back and agitate them in another half an hour. And we'll see what's, what's wetting. Okay, thrilling update. It looked like there was nothing going into these. But check it out. The end of that is definitely turning orange. And I think that there's probably dye through the middle. If I look at it. I'm going to leave them in there. Because I don't see a real good reason not to, I guess. I would think it would take longer than 35 minutes just for the plant fibers to see. Now, none of that has gotten any color down in there yet. This one I may have wrapped too tight. Well, I guess we will find out. But we will leave it. I can see that this is the red bud one because look at all the color. I can see the red buds in there. Eee! And this is my control, which is just a piece that I saddened in the iron first. And you can see that it made it a much sadder orange. So we know that that's working. And this one, it looks like fiber is definitely getting wet in there. This is the eucalyptus. But I don't think there's much color in there. So I'm going to leave those keep going. This one might be good. I'm not sure. It's, it's doing stuff. We're just going to leave them. And uh, I'll come back and agitate them in another half an hour, and we'll see what's, what's wetting. Okay, what I'm, cons what I'm concerned about is that I'm boiling little sausages here instead of I'm just steaming them, which is fine. We are going to do uh, bundle dyeing, but that was not the goal for today. I wanted it to interact. So I'm going to take out at least this one, maybe the other one that's over there that looks like there's not a ton of water getting in. I'm going to rewrap it in a less strong cordage. Um, I was, the lady said to wrap it tight and in autism land that me like if you say really tight, I'm going to wrap it as tight as I possibly can. And that is apparently too tight. I've made little steam sausages, but that's okay because the dye is really strong. So if we let some dye in, this one feels heavier, like it's got some weight to it, but I still think I may have, uh, Godzilla wrapped these because yeah, there's no color other than what's coming from inside. Okay. Yeah. We're going to have to rewrap these. But then we'll only give them like 20 or 30 minutes because how could it possibly need a lot of time in the low quad dye? Wow, so we will definitely be revisiting the uh, red bud leaves as a dye uh, stuff because wow. Okay, so I'm going to rewrap this more gently since obviously there was no um, low quad dye getting in there. I'm going to do the same thing to the other one, throw them back in, and then come back in about 30 minutes. This is just furthering my uh, thesis on uh, dyeing and fabric coloring being the original witchcraft with like spinsters who were the only powerful females because their husbands had died so they just retained their own wealth and they became wool spinners and, and these are just like looking like little torture devices like I bound an ex-boyfriend up and I'm throwing him in the freezer but I'm throwing him in a dye bath. And I'm just envisioning some horrible Puritan man walking up and there's some lady who's phase changing weld with woad and urine and it's turning to blue and this guy's going like, this hoe is doing alchemy. You can't do that. Only scientists can do alchemy and those scientists are men. They're not lady people. So clearly this is witchcraft. And you've got cauldrons boiling all over and jars full of rusty nails. And uh, yeah, so these look much less like a... A, a binding ceremony and look more like a dye ball now. Lesson learned. Okay, well, despite rewrapping them, I'm not sure that changed much. And I maybe am just being tricked by my eye to think that it is not orange in there or the color phase changed more than I thought it could.
So who knows, but these have been in here for two hours now, so they are coming out and they are going to completely cool off before we unveil them. As I was putting on my gloves, I just had another witch epiphany. You know how they're always depicting witchy people and people doing Vodun stuff and just witchy people of all cultures? They always show them with their fingertips all covered in black stuff. Maybe they're just doing dye baths. Racists. Anyway, that's my thoughts on the matter. Uh, I am going to snip this and these have completely cooled. I'm going to reuse the twine now that I know not to violently wrap it as I did earlier. Maybe it will turn out it was a good thing that I so angrily wrapped it. You don't know. I don't know. <laughs> this is new to me too. Okay, and this guy. Trying not to ruin my plastic so that I can use it again and not have to do it again. It doesn't feel like the plastic fused to anything, so I'm not afraid of that at all. Plastic seems to have come out unscathed. And I don't know if that was the correct one to cut, but here we are. Well, it's coming off like that. Okay, let's see if we got any printing. And remember that this could be a complete catastrophe and I'm showing you everything so that you are not afraid to fail because failure is not a failure. You're not losing, you're gaining data. Okay, let's gain data. Okay, we have some beautiful graying. So the, uh, and look, it didn't penetrate at all. This is the boxwood. So it definitely reacted to the iron. Very cool. It smells terrifying. Oh my goodness, does that smell weird. Wow. Okay, so we definitely got some leaf prints. Weird though they might be. And I can see that I have wrapped it too tightly. My uh, violence knows no bounds. But we did, in fact, whether or not we like it, make a leaf print. We had a reaction between tannins. And we have weird orange edges. We did it. We actually did a thing, you guys. It might not be the most beautiful thing you've ever seen, but it is, in fact, a thing. We did the science. We did experimentation. We were bold and fearless in our pursuit of knowledge. And that's important. Always remember that. Okay, there's one down. So the other ones were wrapped even tighter than this. So I do not have high hopes. I was uh, very, very aggressive. This one I think is the red bud. This one I think is eucalyptus, which has a lot of tannin in it. So it should have reacted. I don't know if boxwood has a lot of tannin in it. I just saw it in my yard and thought it looked cool. Let's see. Ooh, look at it. Look, that's the plastic side. Ooh, it's way more fun to unroll that way. <laughs> then it looks like something before you ruin it. Let's see. Oh, look at the green that came through. These are brand... Oh my god, the smell is horrifying. Oh, oh, this is why we do this on the outside of town. Oh, I should have taken so much allergy meds or done this outside. Note to self! Do this part outside. Yuck. Oh, but look at how good it is! Look! Ah, it's so cool! We did it! Oh my goodness, look at how frick fracking cool that is. And look, there's like little bits of iron that got lodged around the leaf and outlined it. That's what all those little black bits are, or where the oak tannins, uh, or where the tannins from the dyes reacted with the iron. Oh, that one's really cool. Okay, that one's a super yay. You got, I, I don't think anyone realizes, like, these should not come out. Mostly, I don't think people just follow instructions well. I mostly just follow instructions and things seem to work out for me. Let's see. Okay, <laughs> the leaves have, like, nearly dissolved. Oh, but look, it made, like, rainbow colors. Oh my gosh, how cool. How did I manage to wrap these, like, inside out compared to the other ones? What is going on? Wow! Look at that! Wow, some of these are really dark. Okay, so the most crinkly dried out ones really react and turn black. And the 
the lightest, greeniest ones make this like wonderful lime green and magenta. What a cool print we made! There's even the outlines of some of them here with like the, the pellets from the iron bits. Okay, well, I am just thrilled with that. I'm gonna go rinse these and clean up the absolute disgusting stink pot of leaves. Ugh. Yikes. Ugh, so many paper towels. Don't worry, we're using them. Hey, well, here's our first ever try at eco printing. And I'm confident that we were getting more reaction than we thought. Uh, this is a piece that was just mordanted in iron and it had alum, then I dipped it in iron, then I just threw it in the pot. So this is just plain old saddened loquat dye. And then these ones were alum mordanted first. I dipped them in the iron bath and then dunked them and apparently just steamed them because they don't have a lot of penetration of the loquat dye, as you can see. Apparently I just excellently steamed them and got a pretty good print anyway, just from the natural tannins in the leaves. So like some of the details are really fun. All of the speckling I really enjoy. I think that's speckling on the leaf itself, I want to say. Couldn't tell you if that's the truth. And then the boxwood, if anything, I wonder if it just wasn't... I wonder if it just... Oh, look, it's Jesus. No, it's not Jesus. It's um, a lady on the front of a boat that's not the Titanic. Pick, pick, take your pick. It's Aphrodite coming out of the sea. Uh, but you can see some of the stems where they made really good contact. So where a really good contact was made, there's actually a pretty good print. It looks crazy from far away, but up close you can actually kind of see the little branchy bits of boxwood. So that might have been not wrapped tight enough. And where I really got it squished it good, it actually worked well. Don't know. Couldn't tell yet. We're going to do more experiments. And then the red bud up here, now that it's all washed, lost a bunch of purple. But it retained this like highlighter neon green and this crazy, really deep, dark, like blackish green that is definitely having an interaction with the iron. Something is interacting with iron in here and something in here. In the most dried out leaf, the tannin seemed to go this deep black when uh, exposed to the iron wash. But anyway, I hope we're all super pleased. I am. They're going to dry a little bit more, but they're basically done. And I will show you them when they're all dry. I'm going to hang them up and we'll take a final recap of our first dyeing experiment. And this is what it would have looked like if we had just thrown them in without having done any rolling or steaming or putting on of anything. So that's a pretty dramatic difference. If you are worried about your ability to make them look perfect, worry more about your ability to get them to do something first. This did a lot of things. Now we can unpack that. That's the scientific process without being mean to yourself. Reparent your inner child. It's okay to fail. So for a final roundup on our <clears throat> first eco dyeing experiment, which to review was 1%, 1 or 2%, I would say, of an iron dip on already alum mordanted fabric and then steamed, basically. But this is the boxwood, which I think I will revisit when we print again, because in the areas where I got good contact, there's some really nice um, shapes of the plant where you can see little ghosts of where the leaves were before it printed. I would call this one the muddiest print, but I think it's actually maybe one of my favorites as far as how much I learned from it. So I really like this one and I like how much the dye saddened as well. And so let's look at another one. I've kind of folded them up so you can see the best of them in an interesting way. But this one's really nice in its own way. This is the Forest Pansy Red Bud, which came out with quite a bit of pink on it, but uh, went in with, uh, or came out with a ton of pink and then came out of the wash with hardly any. So the uh, dye that it contains spread really easily, which is interesting. 
but where the leaves were the most dried out and or the smallest, they seemed to have really intense reactions to the iron and the tannins from the loquat dye. So I think some of these prints are really ideal. And if this wasn't such a rough uh, textured muslin that I had used as a practice fabric, I think it would have come out even better. Also, I think that wrapping around a large dowel probably matters more uh, to let the leaf fibers spread out as far as making sure that they don't get completely smushed and obliterated in the rolling process. All right, so that was eco print number two from today. And I think what I would call the most successful, if that's a thing, when you're just experimenting and all you wanted to do was try out a process. Uh, the coolest one, I guess, is this eucalyptus. My dad picked me a bunch of very young baby eucalyptus, which is where all these little wispy bits that made all the cool swirls came off. And I just love how the iron collected around the edges of the leaf in such a fun way. And there's even some really rich colors where some dark, uh, darker tannins came out of the branch. Some of the leaves that are tiny even turned completely black. So I wonder if the smallest ones are more tannin rich, because even this one down here got very inky black. But I just think that interaction is so cool, and I am so excited that I got a legit very planty looking eco print like you can definitely tell that that was at one time a eucalyptus so i hope you enjoyed this experiment i know it's a bit chaotic but that's just who i am so if you would hit the like or subscribe button or leave me a comment on which eco print was your favorite or if you know more than me which i'm sure you do if you've done any eco dyeing i am just learning i would love to hear your thoughts I hope that you enjoyed, and please, if you have a chance, check out the links in the description box below, and maybe come and stitch with me on Patreon or Facebook, where I talk in depth about all this stuff. Thank you for coming, and I will see you in the next experiment.